Hello, this is Feridun uh, with another electronic video. Today I'm going to teach you about this capacitor and resistor circuit, uh, charging a capacitor also using a boat plotter. Uh, how to design the circuit, how to put it together and how to um, see the signals, input output signal and also how to see the graph on the both plotter which is this one now um, I'm just gonna at the moment uh, this is a final circuit it's all functional what I'm gonna do uh, is to uh, turn the circuit off and close these display circuits off to just show you how to uh, how to put the circuit together right first thing you do you have a resistor capacitor in series uh, well, it looks like in series, but because this is our input and from this point is our output and your earth is common, then really it's a low pass filter, really. So it's not in series as such. Um, so your in input is coming, input signal is coming to, to the resistor going outside and the high the, the capacitor high frequency is going through the capacitor to the earth what you need is a resistor which you can find from the bank of resistors you click on this item which is place basic you can go there you can go there different ways but I'll just show you one way one method and resistor you choose resistor and then you choose the size of your resistor or you just drop any resistor size that you have by default you just drop it there whatever you want and then you go to the next element which is a capacitor um, it's a non-polarized capacitor so you don't choose this type electrolyte capacitor you don't use that you use this one and again you choose the size of your capacitor that you've been given for your assessment or your whatever you're doing you're trying to do uh, and then drop it there uh, in the screen and I'm just gonna close this uh, these are extra I've already built the circuit so I'm gonna delete those and just show you how to get them there Oh, by the way, once you drop the resistor and capacitor by default, you can actually double click on them, double click on the size and change the value. Let's say this is 10 nanofarad, you could change it to 100 N or 100 nanofarad and then press OK, it changes it. But I'm just going to go back to 10 nanofarad because that's what I've designed. The same with resistor, you can double click on the the value double click on the, the value of the resistor and then change that it's 1k at the moment you could say uh, 100k and press ok but i'm not going to do that like i said i've already designed this so it's all functional and what you need here is a signal generator or function generator which you can find on the right side of your display function generator is the second icon and click it and then drop it here in the display area or the, the breadboard area if you like uh, again i've already put that there so i'm going to delete this extra one you don't want complications the zero, you have positive, negative, and zero or ground. The ground is connected to the ground. And as you know, if you work with multi-SIM, without the ground circuit won't work. Um, it won't function. So you need the ground. So you go again to this item place source where you can find power supplies and uh, ground. So you press on power supply and then you have ground and then click on that you could also use digital ground ground it doesn't make any difference it would work the same way 
so and then you press ok it'll drop in the um, display area or the breadboard area and then you can connect it then um, yeah so you connect that if you haven't worked with multi sim all you have to do to connect things you just click on that pin from that um, component or equipment and then drag it to the next point and then click again uh, but this is just an example I'm not doing this because we don't need that negative part of it negative pin of the signal generator we need the ground to the ground positive to the input of the resistor 1k here in this case and 10 nanofarad capacitor uh, this is the, the way you build the circuit after you built the circuit you put this oscilloscope uh, if you put a function generator you need an oscilloscope and you need a board plotter you don't necessarily need both of them at the same time but I put them at the same time just to show you the input and output signals using the oscilloscope and also the cutout frequency or cutoff frequency uh, using the board plotter uh, most people call it board blotter but it's, it's wrong it's, it's not board blotter it's board plotter as it plots the board <laughs> so it plots the graph there you go to the right column again if you hover over them it'll tell you what they are what those icons are so you go to the oscilloscope you, next one is four channel oscilloscope you don't need that you just need two channel oscilloscope so your first one is the first oscilloscope that you come across is the one that you need and you drop that there you get this one and as you see each one of these are your uh, channels so you have two channels yeah. channel a channel b channel a is, is used here as your input as you see the positive is the middle one is connected to the input and the outer part of the input channel is the negative ground is connected to the ground the same you could connect this the same way to the ground or you could just connect this this way so the grounds are connected together to the ground positive is connected to the input of a channel a and the channel b positive is connected to the output of the circuit which is this point and uh, to choose different colors when you get the waveforms you need to right click on the line or the wire um, in this case I've chosen green for the output you could choose any color for the input or output let's say I'm changing the color on the um, output so you click on that wire first and then right click on it, it says segment color so we change it to blue and um, when you see the waveform the, the wire is changed to blue and also the waveform will change to that color uh, input we can just keep it red or just change it uh, to something else no, purplish that's right um, sorry about that okay now the color is changed now if I <coughs> um, double click on this you see the screen now this is from before it hasn't we haven't run the circuit yet but I'm just going to close it at the moment to put the board plotter there as well the board plotter is also on the right side the right side of the screen on the uh, right column it, again if you again if you hover over the icons you'll see it says board plotter where it says board plotter you click on that and then it comes to the uh, breadboard area and then click again and it drops it there uh, which is what we already have so I'm gonna get rid of that one right then you have input output input positive is connected to your input of the circuit negative both negatives are connected to the ground so you could just make it a simpler circuit by instead of dragging two lines to the ground you just drag one let's just get rid of this one I'll show you what I mean 
like this. So you have two negatives together and then connected to the ground. It just makes it nice and simpler looking and uh, neater. And then the output positive is connected to the output, the same as the oscilloscope. So that's the way it's connected. Once it's connected, then you can run the circuit by either pressing this uh, button, run. or just press the switch button. There is a switch button uh, usually. There's a switch button here, it's not showing now. Uh, it doesn't matter now. You can just press that button and it runs. When, uh, let me, sorry, let me stop this. Double click on the uh, displays and double click on the boat plotter and also double click on the signal generator now signal generator i've set it you can set it at any frequency you want and at any any amplitude you want uh, or the the assignment is asking you to do so if your amplitude you choose the amplitude you want uh, i've said that 10 volt peak frequency is set at 50 kilohertz and i've chosen sine wave you could choose different um, signals so to rectangular or um, square wave but sine wave is my choice here and then the values are set like I said 50 kilohertz 10 volts and that's it once it's set it's set then you can always keep that aside or just close it and then turn the circuit on you'll see the purple waveform is the input as we decided here the purple is your input the blue is your output now the waves are flickering a little bit so I'm just gonna put it on single make sure your input both channels channel A and channel B are on AC and this setting basically is set on your uh, oscilloscope and I've chosen 5 volt per division for both channels so you can see the comparison between input and output and the time scale is 10 microsecond per division so in this case you can see the voltage of the input um, as we set it from the signal generator 10 volt peak you can see 10 which is two squares here and two times five volt per division it gives you 10 volt peak or 20 volt peak to peak value and then the the output is just short of five volts about maybe f four volts maximum peak uh, so it has um, filtered the frequency, it's got rid of the high frequencies, only lo allowing low frequencies through. This is the oscilloscope part of it. The boat plotter, you can understand it this way. <coughs> I've set it on magnitude and log um, the frequency I've put to two gigahertz maximum but you can change that this this just changes the as you see it just changes the scale and that one uh, similar ways that you can just change those things to what is best for you to get the best results now to get the cutoff frequency you need to drag this tracker from the left of the display to the right to the point that uh, as you can see at the bottom you, you have a display of the frequency and decibel decibel is showing minus 0.094 decibel at the moment you have to drag this to the point where it's almost 3 decibel or minus 3 decibel 
you can't get it exactly so at the moment I've got it um, coincidentally by um, minus 2.999 oh sorry minus 2.899 decibel this is close enough for me basically what you're saying is three decibel below the horizontal line is where the, the cutoff frequency is so that is where that is the point where you can read this frequency and say this is my cutoff frequency and it should correspond with your calculation if you calculate the cutoff frequency from that formula then you should have similar frequency at, at the moment you get 15.509 kilohertz cutoff frequency and that's that as simple as that so you've got a board plotter here you've got a oscilloscope here all of them displaying this the function of this low pass filter and that is your function generator or signal generator showing you the signal and like I said you could change the signal like you just did and then you have to if you change anything you have to stop the circuit and start it again so it functions and it shows this function <coughs> You see, this is the triangular waveform. It will be the same, similar thing. It won't make much difference, but I'm gonna stop it and go back to the sine wave and start again. If again, if you've set that on single, you have to change it to normal. So it operates, it shows the waveform, and then you hold the signal, then you can read it better. And that's that. But once again, with the block board, board plotter all you have to do is connect the board plotter the same as the oscilloscope the ground the negatives are connected to the ground the positive one of them is input it says clearly input positive goes all the way to the input and positive of the output is going to the output and like I said negatives are connected to the ground same with the oscilloscope negatives are connected to the ground negatives of both channels positive of one channel is considered as your input positive of the other channel is considered as your output you could choose either way you could choose channel B as your input and channel A as your output but I've chosen it this way and <clears throat> once you've connected it then um, start the circuit uh, you can change variables uh, resistors and capacitor values change the variables change the values and see different results different frequencies design different fil filters uh, and then to find out the cutoff frequency you drag this tracker to the point where you see minus three decibel or thereabouts and um, again I got back to minus 2.899 decibel or you could just go one step up and get three minus 3.245 decibel which I think the other one is closer to three decibel so I'll put it back there at minus 2899 decibel you have to get as close as possible to minus three decibel which is three decibel below the horizontal line then at that point you read the frequency which in this case is 15.509 kilohertz that is your cutoff frequency Thank you very much. I hope this video helped you with your uh, question or your assignment. And if there is any questions or comments, please don't be shy. Make comments, share the video, subscribe and ask for more videos. Uh, any suggestions, any videos that you want me to do in electrical, electronic engineering. Uh, um, do my best to do that okay I'll see you again with another video soon goodbye for now